So I'm a bioarchaeologist. I study the human skeletal remains from archaeological excavations. The places I work are often very remote, difficult to reach, and seldom visited by foreigners. Here I am in northwestern China. I'm standing on the Great Wall, where Genghis Khan's Mongol army went through on their way to can conquer China almost a thousand years ago. <clears throat> at, the at the archaeological sites, the archaeologists will excavate down to the burial. My job is to excavate the skeletons, package them for transport to the lab, and then I analyze them. I reconstruct their lives from the skeleton. I actually read the skeleton. I can tell you if they were male or female, how old they were when they died. Did they suffer from arthritis or long-term diseases, and did they do hard manual labor? Sometimes I can also tell you if their family members are buried close by and if there are any foreigners present. For every individual I analyze in the lab is actually an accident. It is all a matter of chance. So for every skeleton found and excavated, there are probably a thousand lost to looting, human construction projects, decomposition, and natural forces. My job is to find lost things and to remember forgotten people. So I am sitting in a lab with about 5,000 skeletons in my father's ancestral homeland in their ancestral province in northwestern China. So I'm looking out the window at my ancestral homeland, and I realize I don't actually know anything about my own immediate family. I know more about people who died 4,000 years ago than I know about my family members who lived less than 100 years ago. So what do I know? I knew my father was born in southern Taiwan. His, father, uh, his family owned a large amount of land, and their family had been in Taiwan since about the 1860s. My grandfather was only one of two men in the entire town who were literate. He could read and write. Not only that, he could also read and write Taiwanese and Japanese. My grandfather was also wealthy enough to have three wives and 19 children. My grandfather and my father's names are listed in the Lee family name book, which traces all of the male descendants in the family back to northwestern China for the last 1,000 years. However, this means no women's names were ever recorded. So nothing is known of any of them they are all lost and mostly forgotten. So I decided to look for someone I have met, but I have no memories of her. It is because of the choices she made in her life that I have the opportunity to stand here today and share her story with you. This is my father's mother. She was the third wife. When she was in her 60s, she got her first passport boarded an airplane for the first time, and flew halfway around the world to meet me. My grandmother never went to school. She could not read or write or do even simple math. I had asked my father, did I understand her when she spoke to me in Taiwanese? His answer was, you were one years old. We weren't sure you understood anything at all. He said that I would hold her hand and we would just walk off and have great adventures. So this picture is of my grandmother and me walking off somewhere in Texas. Our time together was actually very short. My grandfather died while she was in Texas, and I flew to Taiwan to be with her at his funeral. I had my first passport before I was even two. This picture shows about half of my family uh, at my grandfather's funeral. Everyone always assumes I'm the baby being held by my grandmother in the front, but actually I'm the one standing behind her, not looking at the camera. She died not long after this photograph was taken, and I'm told of a broken heart. Because my grandmother was a girl, there are no records of her birth. No one ever knew her birthday. 
We only recently figured out that the year she was born, the year of the monkey, was 1907. She was born during the Japanese occupation of Taiwan. The Japanese had outlawed opium smoking, head hunting, and foot binding. While the first and second wives had had bound feet, my grandmother was just, just young enough to have never had her feet bound. Her father had died when she was a teenager. He had actually choked to death at a wedding. Her mother was left to support four children, including my grandmother, on her own. My grandmother had had to work in order to help support her siblings, and she was still unmarried in her mid-twenties, which was considered old for her time. So my grandmother went to work for my grandfather, and they had an affair. My grandmother became pregnant. They tried all of the medicines available at the time to cause a miscarriage, and it was unsuccessful. At this time, even though my grandmother was obviously pregnant, another man had proposed marriage to her, and she refused him. At this period in time, legally children are the property of the father. Her child would have had to live with my grandfather's family, and she would have never been a part of this child's life. So because of this, she decided to become my grandfather's third wife. This is actually a picture of my parents' engagement ceremony. My grandfather is the gentleman in the front sitting down. When it came time to deliver the baby, the second wife actually helped my grandmother through her uh, giving birth. When the baby was born, she was not breathing. And so she was wrapped in a blanket and placed in the doorway. This was to let the little soul return quietly to heaven. The next day, when the second wife went to check on my grandmother, as she stepped across the doorway, the baby moved and made a sound. If this baby had died, my grandmother would have been free to marry someone else. My grandmother's second child was my father. She would have six children in the end. Because my grandmother never had, an, never had an education, from a young age, my father would read, write, and do simple math for her. My father was the first person in his family to go to college. He then traveled to the United States to get his PhD. He has always taught me that education is the key to freedom. Only now, as an adult, do I fully understand the gift she gave me. This is my father's first grade class. So he's actually in the very back row. He's the fourth one from the tallest to the right of the tree. So this photograph was taken at a family reunion two years ago at my father's childhood home in Taiwan. Most of these people in this photograph were also in the photograph at my grandfather's funeral. My father is the gentleman in the light blue shirt sitting in the front row towards the middle. His older sister, the baby that was left in the doorway, is in the dark red shirt to his right. And she happens to be the feistiest vegetarian I know. My face is actually just behind my uncle in the wheelchair. So many, many cultures believe the soul exists after death. They also believe that it continues to live as long as someone remembers their name. So I leave you with something I myself as have just learned only recently. This is actually my grandmother's name. Thank you.